Bypass Publishing presents Psychology in the Fast Lane Difficult Topics Explained Brain Structures Now we all have a brain, and we all use them in different ways, but they're all divided the same way into the hindbrain, the midbrain, and the forebrain. As you can see, the spinal cord directly connects with the hindbrain, which contains a number of important structures. The medulla is the physical connection between the brain and the spinal cord, and it's responsible for life functions, such as breathing, heart rate, and blood pressure. If this structure is damaged, you might have difficulty breathing and regulating your heart rate. In fact, damage to it usually results in death. The rounded section above and to the front of the medulla is the pons, which is Latin for the bridge and this structure serves as a bridge between the medulla and the higher brain structures. Slightly behind it, we can see the reticular formation, which plays a role in alerting higher brain structures about incoming information. The reticular formation is involved in arousal, sleep, and attention. If we didn't know when it was necessary to sleep and what information to pay attention to, we couldn't function very well. The last hindbrain structure I'll discuss is the cerebellum. It looks a little bit like a cauliflower and it's located behind the brain stem that connects the brain to the spinal cord. The cerebellum is essential for coordinating motor movements such as walking or riding a bike. Damage to the cerebellum could impair motor coordination so that something as simple as walking could become difficult. And now we've got the midbrain. Because it's less specialized and plays a less important role in the human brain relative to other animals, I'll only bring up two structures here, the superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus. Based on those names, it sounds like one is more important than the other, but that's not the case. Superior and inferior refer to the anatomical locations, where superior is physically above the inferior. The superior colliculus allows us to locate an object in space, while the inferior colliculus controls our ability to localize sound. So now that just leaves us with the forebrain. Because the forebrain is essential for our most advanced, high-level behaviors, we need to take a closer look here. As you can see, the forebrain is made up of the thalamus, hypothalamus, limbic system, which includes the amygdala, and the hippocampus, and the cerebrum. The thalamus serves as a relay station for all our sensory information, for visual information to be processed. A specific area of the thalamus must direct it to the appropriate place in the cerebral cortex. The same goes for auditory information, as well as gustatory, which is taste, and proprioception, which is touch. But olfaction, which is smell, is different because it doesn't get routed through the thalamus. Directly below the thalamus is the hypothalamus, which regulates motivated behaviors such as eating, drinking, sex, and temperature regulation. Regulation of these things is important because if you eat too little, you'll starve, and if you eat too much, you'll become obese. And both of these conditions are bad, so the hypothalamus helps us maintain the optimal levels. Now, let's talk about the limbic system. This group of structures includes the hippocampus and the amygdala, and it is generally responsible for regulating emotion and memory. The hippocampus plays a role in our ability to create new memories, while the amygdala is important in processing emotional information. Lastly, I want to discuss the organization of the cerebral cortex. The occipital lobe is located at the back of the brain, and it processes visual information. In front of it, we have the parietal lobe that processes sensory information from the body, such as touch, temperature, and pressure. The central solstice separates the parietal lobe from the frontal lobe, and likewise, the lateral solstice separates the temporal lobe from the parietal and frontal lobes.